Whoa, what's this? This is House on the Hill. Half traditional Georgian farmhouse, half space age monolith. With gleaming dark walls, jagged edges and mirrored surfaces. Inside, it's a temple to airiness and light. But this strange combination does work brilliantly. The new West Wing might seem at odds with the old place, but it is quieter and subservient, as if it were an angular shadow of the Georgian farmhouse. Inside, there's no sense of separation between the new and the old. Boundaries are blurred, with living, dining and cooking spaces joined together. Nothing is straight either. Everything is at a slight angle, from the roof lights to the corners and walls. The RIBA judges praised these skewed geometries, which lead your eye and then gently lead you on to explore new spaces and encounters in the building. As humans, we're just drawn to nature to the complex forms and shapes, the organic qualities of it. And I've tried to sort of infuse the house with that kind of relaxed quality. It's about getting to feel at ease. It's almost impossible to really explain how this feels, except it just feels gorgeous. That gorgeousness perhaps stems from how the angles converge on arrival points in the building, points that turn out to be places for making contact with the natural world outside. There are at least three ways of seeing out in every room in the house. There's always at least two windows and a roof light, or at least three windows pointing in different directions so that Every space in the house is able to capture light at different times of the day. So you're always able to sense the landscape and to sense light coming in in different ways. Astonishingly, this painstaking project took 10 years to complete. It was finished in stages. The grand finale was the pool area within a walled garden. There is this wonderful kind of passage from the kind of original stone house through the open fluidity of the West Wing, and then we've come completely out into the open and sort of ending with a walled garden. I've always loved walled gardens, and you really need it in the climate of this place. The wind comes kind of roaring up the side of the valley, and you just really need this kind of shelter. Alison wanted the walls in the garden around the pool also to be built in a very particular way. We decided to use mortar-free stoneworks. There's just something very beautiful about dry stone wall where every one of these stones was really fitted by the craftsman. Uh, the builder, the stonemasons who made this. So it, every single one of these stones is a labor of love. It was certainly a labor of love for the mason who had to select and fit each stone, like making a jigsaw as you go along. You know, any of these stones could have had bits sticking out and you just generally you chip them off. With, we use the back, so the square back edge of an ax. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a time consuming job, very time consuming. Yeah, I don't get asked to build walls like this very often, if ever. It's just really expensive. It's just really, really expensive wallpaper. Architecture like this does not come cheap. But then, House on the Hill exudes excellence. It's designed with an obsession with geometry and built with a commitment to craftsmanship. This house is full of surprising contrasts. There's lots of things that shouldn't really work here but they do, and that's entirely because of the detail and precision of the architecture, and that's what makes it so exciting and energizing. It is always difficult to predict 
which house will win house of the year. This year, it could be a you know, wrecked rural ruin that's being rebuilt, or it, it could be, of course, a, an urban house, a small home nestling in a city street. Or, for that matter, it could be a house which revitalizes the existing, extends, adapts, and alters something which was here before it. And the winner is House on the Hill. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> I'm meeting its owners, a retired couple, David and Jenny. <laughs> so congratulations. <laughs> You're in possession of the House of the Year 2021. I'm amazed only because I can't believe that I'm involved in something like that, but it's, it's wonderful. David and Jenny weren't just involved. They chose to radically remodel a Georgian building and add a 310 square meter new west wing, a bold decision at any age. We're at a time of life when, when most people are downsizing and we are upsizing to a very considerable degree. And it must feel refreshing, if nothing else. It's been a fantastic um, shot in the arm. And, it, and it, it was a, it's a magical thing to see this very complicated piece of geometry take shape in front of you. And it is complex. Not one corner of House on the Hill makes a right angle. Every roof light, every wall, has been subtly cranked. The effect is seductive. This walkway, as it narrows, seems to pull me forward. This building sort of performs a little bit like a set of bellows, you know, kind of gently opening and squeezing the spaces. And your route through the building, consequently, is not straight lines, it's more wibbly-wobbly. As you're squeezed and stretched through the house, it leads you, always, to a view. I really like this. It's an observation deck, isn't it? I mean, it allows you to, to see over the landscape. Elsewhere, vast glass walls bring the garden in. And all those voids edged by glass balustrades are designed for enjoying views within views. Within views. And drying the sheets. And drying the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I dry the sheets inside. The house is so per perfectly insulated that rather than use the tumble dryer... I put it over all the balustrades. <laughs> Great. You see? I'm sure it dries in a trice. <laughs> Probably the world's most beautiful clothes horse. House on the Hill was ten years in the making, masterminded by superstar architect Alison Brooks. Congratulations Thanks on winning. Thanks very much. I mean, it's been a very, very long time, very slow burn to, to get to a finished building. I actually am very happy that this project took that length of time. There was time to think and, and evolve, and, and that, I think, has contributed to its sense of timelessness. This timeless appeal is down to one big idea behind House on the Hill. A big idea which ultimately won over the RIBA judges. Allison's startling angular design is rooted in a layout that has been familiar to architects for centuries. The older house follows the classical nine grid plan. And the idea that the ideal plan of any building is a nine grid. The central atrium or space and, and then rooms yeah. of it forming a three by three and, grid. And here, some of those blocks or squares have been removed. One of those on the first floor is kind of slid out and that becomes the upstairs deck. That's right. Yeah. Two volumes at the back, they're completely That's removed. Right. And, and the architect has said, let's break this nine grid plan with subtle five or six degree angles and make it far more organic. Those subtle moves in what is otherwise a very rigid geometry are very creative and the outcome can be beautifully complex and a delight to walk around. You might have been lucky enough to work with an architect on, say, a house extension or even building you a home. And you'll know, therefore, what architecture can do. 
the experiences it can deliver and the delight that it will offer. But if you work with an award-winning architect, well then, you're in another realm. Because what they will provide, the experiences that their building will produce, will be of another world. They will transport you. You will taste greatness.